man DC. You rocking with pettyblog.com. I can't be on the petty blog. <laughs> So, Snoop Dogg's daughter, Corey Brodus, opens up about her mental health that mainly stemmed from her being the darkest one in her family, especially compared to her lighter skin tone older brothers and the confusion in that, and on top of that, also being her parents' only child who faced a slew of health issues since the age of five, like lupus, amongst others, and the medications from her illnesses is the reason for her weight gain. And although people think that being the daughter of such a legend as Snoop should ease the pain, it doesn't because she's still human and got to deal with herself 24 7 you feel me and let's just say this yes we remember for years now ever since she was a little kid people on the internet especially basically bullying her for being so dark and talking down to her about it that's crazy and we remember that she had difficulty in dealing with that we're bullied like people just always talk about me um you're fat you're ugly you're dark you're this you're that and folks even went as far as to say that Snoop must not be her dad because there's no way that she looks like that while her brothers look like this. They said that she does look exactly like her mother, so her mother must have stepped out on Snoop at some point, all because she's darker. First of all, when it comes to a black family, where the same mother and same father, the children can come out in an array of skin tones, okay? Black people are like rainbows. We can produce anything, any race, facts. It's always differences in how a sibling comes out in every family. I actually think that in every family, there's that one sibling who doesn't look like the other two, or the two that don't even look like each other, right or wrong. But yeah, she said that her boyfriend is actually the one who helped her through this crisis. She wrote, The last few weeks, my mental has not been so great. At one point, I tried to end my life, but you and my family really give me a purpose to live and help me realize life is much more than materialistic things and you gotta just keep pushing through the bullshit. Thank you mental health awareness and that post was dedicated to her boo for being there you know what's crazy we vividly remember about two three years ago people trolling her that her boyfriend is using her because of her rich father he doesn't really like her blah 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 and all this awful stuff all because they felt like she was too dark for him what we remember shaking our head as we were reading these mean comments but she had actually responded to one of the trolls at the time with something like lol okay Ooh. They thought it was gonna make her fold and break up with him, but sis was unbothered. And years later, they are still going strong with the black love. But anyway, before we get into the video, we want to let Corey know that you are absolutely beautiful, mamas. Fuck what they talking about. When they say that you're too dark this, too dark that, they just mad because they know in 50 years, your skin gonna be on fleek. Your skin gonna still be intact, boo-boo. And you gonna age like some fine wine. So continue to elevate and ignore the haters. Hello. Today, okay, first of all, like I said in my, um, in my post, like, I just, I've been going through a lot, right? And I don't know, like, something just sparked me to tell you guys, um, <laughs> hi mom, something just sparked me to tell you guys what I've been going through because I feel like I always tell y'all what I'm going through every Sunday, whether it's good or bad. Um, I try to be as open and as, as accessible as possible because I just want everybody to know that I'm human and I mean, we're all human, right? And we all go through stuff, but when you have a title and when you're something or you're somebody, people think you don't go through stuff. And that has to be the most frustrating, irritating thing in the world because just because my dad is who I, who he is, that doesn't mean I don't get sad. That doesn't mean I don't. I don't want things or I don't, or I don't feel away. way. You know, like, I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But basically, um, I posted that I tried to commit suicide. Um, and, and I think it starts from my childhood, right? I grew up with two light-skinned brothers. Um... You know, and I was the only chocolate one. I was I was overweight. I got lupus at six, so I was overweight from being on steroids. Um, and that just automatically just messed with my health. Like, I just, I've always been sad. I've always been depressed. Cause I feel like I just, I've been through a lot. Like, as far as my sickness and them not knowing if it was cancer, or if it was lupus, and then find out that it was lupus and just 
me being six dealing with stuff like that like i hate seeing kids sick because i've been sick i am sick it's a lot like body hurting <sighs> you just in pain and you're so young you're like what is happening to me like what is going on and then you look at your brothers and your other family members like dang like why me <laughs> like why like not saying i wish they had it but why me you know why am i going through this why did god choose me why me and i feel like i've, I've always been in the hospital i just always been sick like it's just always been something wrong with me. And even in school, like my, when I first got lupus, my face used to peel and my hair was falling out. And just even me being dark, like people like looked at me like I was an alien, like I was a monster. And I remember I got on social media when I was like 13 and my mom and dad they didn't want me to because it just, I wasn't strong in there. And um, I got on there and I just, got super bullied like people just always talk about me um you're fat you're ugly you're dark you're this you're that and i used to cry like i mean cry like at 13 i was ready to die like just so sad crying to my mom like mom like i'm so ugly like why why did you have me why why do i look like this why don't i look like my brothers why it was just so many why 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 it was like I hated everything about me. And to this day, there's a couple things that I hate. I always look at myself and I'm just filled with disgust. So just because you have money and just because you're able to do certain things that people can't do, it doesn't mean you don't have a heart, you don't have a mind, you don't have a soul. Like I go through it just like everybody else. And I try to be as transparent and as open as possible because I know there's people out there that go through stuff, maybe worse, right? But you can't make me feel like how I feel is not is not like <laughs> important or it's not it don't matter because my dad is rich and because I have this and I have that when that shit don't mean nothing to me. Like I drive a Toyota Corolla and I'm content. Content. When my dad bought me that car. I, I'm not gonna lie, at first I was like, hmm, a Toyota Corolla? But before that, I was driving Wayne's Acura. And you just learn to appreciate stuff because at the end of the day, this stuff don't matter. When we die, these mansions and these Bentleys and these Birkins, they ain't going with us. You feel me? So I just learned to to love what I have, to appreciate what I have. And I know people always gonna have something to say, no matter what, whether you're doing good or bad, that's just people, people, everybody had their opinions. But I just had to come on here and let y'all know, like, just cause you rich or just cause you whatever, that's like me telling Kylie, you can't be sad. You can't be mental. Why? Cause she a billionaire? She still got feelings at the end of the day. We don't know what she go through. People only show you what they want to show you. So, by the looks of it, her life looked perfect. But she's choosing to show us what she wants to show us. And what she show us is perfect. <laughs> it looks amazing. So, of course, we're going to think, oh, she has a perfect life. But nobody has a perfect life. And that's what I had to understand. I'm looking on social media. I'm looking at these girls' lives that are that are my age and I'm like damn you doing this you doing that I'm sitting here with my two dogs and my boyfriend every day trying to figure out what I want to eat like I just I feel stuck but at the end of the day I'm very blessed I'm in a very blessed position you know what I'm saying and and sometimes they journey is they journey and your journey is your journey just because this person is doing this and doing that don't mean I'm supposed to be doing this and doing that. God may have a whole nother plan for me. And I know a lot of girls that look at these other girls' Instagram and start feeling like how I feel, like I'm not doing enough and 
Oh, I need me a rich nigga. Oh, I need me a big me. Oh, I need me a nigga to do this. Why well, you got a nigga that's doing all this and that? He out there doing him. My grandma told me, you want to be in a mansion with, with your Bentley in the driveway, trying to figure out where your man at, who he with, what he doing? Be content. You got to be content with what you have. We don't know what these women are going through. It looks great. It looks amazing. Trust me. I see it. And I'm like, damn, I want that. I want it. Give me all of it. Give me her life. Just give it to me, please. But... That's not what <laughs> what my life is supposed to be. I'm not saying everybody is going through that they got them a rich dude, but majority of the time, this is what they're going through. So when you have a man that loves you and that shows you that, you have to appreciate it. Like everything I'm telling y'all, I've been through it. I'm still going through it. So that's why I'm able to speak on it. There's plenty of times where I wasn't appreciating Wayne because he not rich and he not this and he not that. Forget all that. You love me for me. You taking care of me. You holding me down when I can't even hold myself down. That's what matters. Not that you can go get me a Bentley right now. You can go get me a purse and take me to Bora Bora. But that you love me and that you there for me, right? So this goes with, with my mental. It's like you seeing all this stuff and you want it and you mad you don't got it. And I'm going to just tell you how the story. So Wayne ends up getting into a car accident. I think it was Sunday. And like I said, I drive a Toyota Corolla. That's my baby. And I was so mad. I'm like, I'm like, Really, like, really? <laughs> like, you crashed my Toyota Corolla? Forget him being alive, forget him being well. You crashed my Corolla? I was ready to lose it all, literally. And something in that accident just triggered me. It triggered me. And I, like I said, my mind's raised and my mind's gone. And I'm like, you know what? I need to go somewhere. I don't know where I'm going, but I need to go somewhere. And I get a hotel. I don't answer nobody phone calls because at this point I'm like, okay, I just need to get away. That's all I was worried about. I just need to get away. That's it. That's all. And then I get to the hotel and I'm just sitting there, you know, I'm just, I kept going to sleep. I kept waking up. I kept going to sleep. Everybody calling me. They don't know where I'm at. And the plan originally wasn't to kill myself. It was just to get away and to not talk to nobody. Cause I just, I couldn't. Life, I can't handle life. I can't handle stress. When stuff gets too hard for me, my mind instantly goes, kill yourself or end it. Cause it's just, I feel like that'd be the easiest way out. I don't want to feel pain no more. I don't want to, to I just, I don't want to feel no more. So if I just end it, I'll be okay. This is the way my mind is thinking. I'm literally giving y'all a look inside of my mind. And so I'm there. Everybody's still blowing me up. They're still blowing me up. And I just turn my phone off. I'm like, I can't. I can't do it no more. So I start hitting people up for perks. And Zane, stop. Zane, stop. And I start hitting people up for perks because I know that perks have fentanyl in them. And sometimes these perks are fake. And I know that'll be the quickest way out. And I'm like, okay. I am keep hitting people about perks. Nobody's hitting me up. Nobody's hitting me back. They're like, you want 30s or 10s? I'm like, I don't know what none of that means. Just give me something. Like, just give me something. Like, give me a perk. Give me... Give me lean. Like, I don't know. Like, I've never done drugs before, but... I wanted to do them today. I wanted to do them that day because I knew the effect that it had on people. So everybody that I hit, there was this one person that I hit and he was going to go get the stuff, but he just stopped answering me. And then I was like, okay, maybe this is a sign from God that I don't need to do the perks. But then the devil comes again and goes, no, you need to do the perks. Keep hitting until you get the damn perks. 
So I'm still trying to get the perks. And I get really bad migraines. So I always have Benadryl and I always have my migraine medicine. So I start Googling, well, how many Benadryls can I take to OD? Like, what can I do to OD? <sighs> so I start calling my mom, I start texting my grandma cause I wasn't texting nobody. And I just text my grandma and I told her, I said, um, I said, tell my mom I want to be cremated. <laughs> and I just kept crying, I kept crying, I kept crying. Cause I'm like, this is like, this is really what you want to do here? Like you just, you want to end it like this? Like you, you done, you ready? And I'm like, yeah, like just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah, like, sometimes I just feel like I don't have a purpose here. <laughs> I deal with so much health stuff. Like, I just be feeling like people don't like really feel me, but they don't. They just think I'm being dramatic or they just think that like what I go through is like, it's, I'm not supposed to be crying right now, but I'm just getting emotional. Like people just think that what I go through is nothing, but I've been through so much, so much shit that I have to stuff. I can't even physically tell y'all because it's so personal. And so I get the Benadryls. I look it up and they're like, if you take five of them, you might can OD. And so, but the ones that I had, they weren't enough. Like the, the milligrams. So I'm like, okay. So I just start popping them. And I start popping my, my migraine medicine. And I said my goodbyes to everybody. And then um, my auntie texted me. I mean, my auntie was calling me. And it was something about her phone call. Because I wasn't supposed to be responding to nobody. This is supposed to be the end. Like, I was supposed to be in my casket, like, somewhere. Somewhere else, not here. And my auntie started calling me and some just told me to answer her call. And I just answered and she's like, what's wrong? What's the matter? And I was like, I just hate my life. Like I'm sick and I'm fat and I'm this and I'm that. I'm like, I just, I feel like I shouldn't be here no more. I feel like I feel better if I'm not here. And then she just starts talking to me and she starts calming me down. But as I'm on the phone with her, I start taking more pills. <sighs> And then finally I started getting like super shaky and super like, you know, drowsy. So I go, um, I go lay down in the bed and she's on the phone with me. She's like, where you at? And I tell her where I'm at. And she's like, what room number? And I tell her. And all of a sudden, like, I just blacked out. But the last thing that I heard her say was, Corey, Corey. And then I just, I was gone. And then, um, all of a sudden, I wake up to paramedics pulling the covers off me, poking me to check my blood sugar, and asking me am I okay, and what's going on, and all this stuff. And I was just, I was so gone. I was like, what is happening? Like, I got pulled on a journey. It was just a crazy night. I had all my family members there. I had Wayne there, his brother, my mom-in-law, my uh, my dad's assistant, my mom, my grandma, one of our close family friends. <sighs> it was just, it was crazy. And like I said, when you're in that state, what you have, who you have, it don't matter to you at all. Like all the people that came and saw me and was there to support me and be there for me. Like when I was in that state, I didn't care. What I cared about was just ending it. Like I didn't want to be here no more. Just take me, whatever, whatever I have to do, I'm getting up out of here. That was my main goal. And so I get to the hospital and they were like, well, what's wrong? Like what happened? And I was just like, obviously I can't tell them I was trying to kill myself because I didn't, I didn't know how none of that mental stuff worked when you're in the hospital and stuff. And so um, they're like, what happened? And I was like, well, I just was feeling sad and I just try to calm myself down. like. I didn't want to tell them, yeah, I was trying to kill myself. 
And so they're like, okay, okay. And they're like, well, thank God what you took. It's not toxic. It's just going to make you super sleepy. I'm like, okay. So then two cops came and they asked me, like, what are you trying to do? And um, I was like, oh, like, I was just trying to, like, you know, just calm down. Like, I wasn't really trying to hurt myself. I just wanted to be relaxed. And they were like, okay, cool. And then I heard him say, well, you're not under no criminal charges, but you something. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, I'm out of it. So I'm like, what are they talking about? And then um, basically they told me I was on hold 5150. And so then I, I'm thinking I'm finna <laughs> get in this hospital, tell them a few things and bounce. And they took like, you know, my vitals and drew my blood and stuff. And they were like, um, my health was good. Everything was good. There was nothing to worry about. And they were like, but you have to see a psychiatrist because when you're on hold, you have to see a psychiatrist and you have to, you know, go to the mental home. And so I stayed overnight at the hospital and since I'm on hold, every time I gotta go to the restroom or every time I gotta do something, there's somebody standing at the door, a nurse. So she gotta get up and go into the restroom and make sure I don't do nothing crazy, basically. And so then after that, they were like, okay, you have to go to a mental facility. And I was like, okay, like, I watched a couple movies about mental facilities and I kind of was like scared. I was like, damn, like I don't want to be in no mental facility. Like I don't want to go through this stuff. And I was like, but this is what happened. This is your consequence. And this is not my first time I've tried to do this. So I think God is probably like, like this is it, you know? Like, cause the other times I've done it, it was just like my security would come up here and watch me for like an hour and take my medication and then everything would be back normal. But this time it was like, God was like, I gotta show you better than I can tell you. Like, you can't keep doing this and the next time you do it, it might not be no next time, you know? And so I got, so the next day they took me to the mental facility. They made me take my clothes off. And mind you, before I went to that facility, I read the comments and the comments were terrible. They had like 1.5 stars and they were just saying all this crazy stuff. And I was just so scared and nervous. So when I came, they had me on a journey and then the security guard opened it and they were like, uh, hold on hold. And they were like, yeah, he's like, okay, hold on. And he closed the door and then he finally let, let us in. And then they, they were cool. Like they weren't mean, they weren't rude or anything. Um, I went in the room and I changed into this dress um, and I went back there and I did some paperwork and then um, I just sat on the couch and they like set it up for me and they gave me like some food, like noodles and stuff and they had, find, they had ended up finding out who I was so I mean I don't know if they would have treated me nice if they didn't know but they just were really nice to me and there for me. Um, I just stayed overnight. I, I woke up and I um, met with the psychiatrist and he just told me like, you just gotta get some help. And you know, like I'm good to go basically. But in that facility, it's just, it's a different experience. I don't know if any of you guys have been in the facility, but it's just like, it makes you go absolutely crazy. Like you don't have no phone, you don't, like you have TV, but you have TV from a certain time. And then you're in there with other people that are mental. And it was just like an eye opener. Like I would never do that again. You know, like I don't even have plans to do, to do that. When I get to that point, I just know I need to pray and I need to know that God is on my side and not let the devil win. But as I was in there, it was just like, it was crazy. I started appreciating everything. It was like, um, like everybody in that facility, they had nobody to call. Like they lived on the streets. Like they, they would come in there so they could have a place to stay. And so they could, um, you know, get fed whenever. And I was just sitting there like, there's so many people that I can call right now that I know will pick up. Um, and I just started appreciating life. I was like, I just want to hug Wayne. Like, I just want to go home and hug Wayne and hug my mom, my auntie, my nana. I just want to feel the floor. <laughs> like, I just, you just start thinking about your life and you just start thinking about stuff. And I'm like, like sitting there crying. Like there's something really like, like I never thought that I would be sitting in a facility. 
for trying to kill myself. Like, I never thought about that. And the fact that I was in there, it kind of, like, made me so sad. As you know, like, I've never been through this. I've never experienced this. And it was really just an eye-opener. I just kept talking to God, like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I ever act ungrateful. I'm just sorry. Because, like I said, I am very blessed. And sometimes when you're in that, in that state, you don't care about none of that. You don't care about having family. You don't care about being able to, like the fact that God gave me a voice to, to sing and to speak about certain things and like a platform, like you don't think about that. You just, it's like literally the devil's in your head. Like, just do it, just do it, kill yourself. Do it, do it, why not? Like, you'll be okay. So I was just in there for a night and then I got out and I was like, I was in so much pain. Like I was just sore. I don't know if my lupus like started flaring up, but I'm still sore to this day. And I got out and I was still just like, I don't want to be here. I was like, why didn't it happen? Like, why didn't God just let, let it happen? Like, why am I still here? So I was just going through it for a couple more days and I feel like I'm finally like, okay. Like I have my moments, but I'm finally okay. And I really just want to talk about God for a moment because he was there with me the whole entire time. Like I couldn't even sleep. I only slept for three hours. And I just kept telling him like, please just relax me. Just make me go to sleep. Just help me. Like. And it's like he just put his hand over me and I just went to sleep and I woke up like, oh dang, I was asleep. So I just want to thank him. And even when I came home, I was still just on one, like mentally. And he just, he just calmed me down. Like he always, he's always there for me when I ask, when I ask him to be, or, you know, and I even check up on him, like, cause I know people don't check on him. They just ask him, can you heal me? Can you heal my brother? Can you do this? Can you do that? We never check up on him and make sure he's good. So I make sure that I do that and I try to be as obedient as I possibly can. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of my story. Well, that is my story. And I think my depression stems from a lot of stuff. I think it stems from my health. I think it stems from what I've, you know, dealt with being here for 21 years, so I have to be 22. Um, so I don't think that just because somebody has money or just because somebody comes from something that they can't feel the way that they feel. You know, I, got, I saw some comments when they're like, I'm so sick of these rich kids and they're trying to end their lives and they're trying to do this and do that. Well, when, a, when things happen, you have to look at why they're happening, right? Like, people don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Like, yeah, we're blessed. Yeah, we're able to do A, B, and C. But sometimes we don't have that support or that, or that comfort that we need, you know? And that's important growing up. So, y'all have to stop thinking that just because somebody is rich or just because somebody is this, that they happy. The guy from Jumanji committed suicide. And I think his name is like Robin Williams or something. Like he committed suicide, Kate Spade. Like I can name a couple people that were rich and famous and they committed suicide. Like we all go through stuff. You can't tell me I can't go through nothing because my dad is rich. That's BS. That's BS. I'm pretty sure there's things that he goes through that he's sad about, but he's Snoop Dogg. So you tell me Snoop Dogg can't be sad? No, that's not that's not fair and that's not right. And I feel like sometimes people on Skid Row is more happy than people that's in a mansion. Like, more money, more problems. So you can't, yeah, and they do. And money don't always make you happy. Things don't always make you happy. So, a lot of people are just being very insensitive, but there's a lot of people that's also being very supportive 
and being there. And like I said, I'm not posting this for y'all to feel bad or feel sad or for attention. I'm posting this because I know it may help the next person to know that, okay, I can relate to her. I can relate to somebody like her. And that's what I get all the time. Like people DM me and they're like, there's nobody else on social media that I can relate to, but I can relate to you. Cause it's real. It's not a facade, it's real. And we look on social media, looking at other people's lives, which is not real half the time. And we want that. Like I said, I know a bunch of girls that look at other girls' lives and want what they have. But half the time what they have is not even genuine and they're not even happy. But like I said, everybody goes through stuff. Some people like to voice it and some people don't, but I'm the type to where I like to voice certain things so that you know, we all can just be on one accord and talk about it and, and be there for each other. Depression don't have no title on it. It don't. It really don't. Or like no target, however you say it. Like, I could have been poor. And what y'all gonna say, I'm too poor to not, I'm too poor to be depressed? Like, that makes no sense. You see how silly that sounds? It's sad. And I always go on Instagram and express to y'all how I feel. Like, cause at first y'all didn't know nothing about me. Y'all didn't know what I sounded like. <laughs> like y'all didn't know anything. And I decided to start going on there and just having these talks every Sunday. So y'all can know, get to know me and I can get to know y'all. So. If you're going through something, talk about it. Like I even found me a hobby. I went on Google the other day cause I'm like, I can't keep living like this. Like it's just, it's a sad feeling. Like just not in the mood for nothing. Just don't want to be here. Like I got to get out of it. Like I have a purpose. I just have to figure out what that purpose is. And maybe this is my purpose, you know? I don't know. And so I went online and I found a few hobbies that I want to do and I have something coming very soon and I hope y'all rock with it and just know that it's all genuine and it's all love and it's, you know, time has been hard, but I, I know that we can make good times um, out of bad times. So thank you guys so much for listening. Um, for being supportive. Like I said, every day is a struggle. I may wake up tomorrow and be back at square one. But there's a push now. There's a fight now. There's not. Like I haven't really had thoughts about like ending it or like not wanting to be here. It's kind of just like, Lord, just help me figure out what I need to do to get to the next step. And I just need to, I need to get busy, I need to get active, I need to do what I love and do what I wanna do. So, and I feel like I'm at an age and even like my homegirls were at an age where like, we're like grown, but we're young. <laughs> so it's like, are we supposed to have it figured out? Like, and then it goes back to social media when you see girls your age and they're popping in there they they look like they got it figured out and i think that's the main thing is they look like they have it figured out and then you're sitting here like okay i'm not doing anything i'm not doing anything to make income i'm just sitting here watching disney plus all day but i'm blessed enough to do that but is that what i, what I want my life to be like for the rest of my life you know it's, it's like it's weird it's like it's like mixed emotions and I feel like our timing is our timing, but obviously we have to do stuff so it is our timing. So, we have our own journey, we have our own path, and let's just do whatever we can to follow it. There's gonna be ups and downs. Life is definitely a roller coaster. And my focus right now is really getting my mental right because every ball that 
that's thrown at me and hits me right in my face. And then I'm just sitting there like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> like, I don't know how to dodge and duck and all that. It's like, when stuff gets hard, I'm like, okay, what's happening here? Like, I just don't know how to handle it. So that's really what I'm working on now is handling life, being an adult, um, not just trying to give up so easy yeah i took some time off social media for a while i mean i was on there but like i really wasn't on there <laughs> and it it made me feel 10 times better um so and sometimes it could be like my cousin told me sometimes it could be your timeline like who you're following like i feel like i don't follow anybody that looks like me you know or, or does what i does what i do so if i'm looking at somebody that is the complete opposite of me my mind is tricking me that i want that but you don't even like that nor do you want that, you know? Your mind is very powerful. It really is. So just appreciate your life. Because we only get one. When things get hard, just pray. But taking your life is not worth it. And it's not. It's not okay. And you definitely don't want to be on hold. And you definitely don't want to be in a facility home. It's just, it adds more stress to you. So, let's get our mental right and let's do what we gotta do together. Like I said, I'm here. Like, I'm a prime example of all of this. I'm a prime example that you can be in a position and be sad and be mental and be suicidal. You know, like, and I have regular friends, like, and I don't even like to say regular because we're all regular. <laughs> but I have friends that are like, they're regular, you know? Like I don't really hang out with like celebrity kids or and I just feel like I'm, I've never been able to relate. Like we're just, we're just different. So just surround yourself around good people and appreciate what you have for real because all of this has really taught me a lesson. And I hope that I made somebody day today. <laughs> and I hope that I was open and transparent as possible. <sighs> and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. That's a dog that